there are journeys to hell and back. And so we can all expect that in an ordinary life, that there'll be times with the sunshine and the roses and the flowers and the pots of gold. And then there'll also be times that are incredibly challenging. And so those listening, like either way, right? Or anywhere in between. Hello, this is Kate Stillman with the Thrive with Kate podcast, formerly the Yoga Healer podcast, and I'm here with a few members of my advisory board and Lori Cousy, who's our team manager at Club Thrive and Wellness Pro Academy. And I just led our I just led our Club Hero members and a few advisors through our brand new up level your life crash course. And the reason I put together the up level your life crash course was because I found that often people don't up level their lives. And sometimes that's just simply because they haven't taken a step out and really gone through a process which helps them understand really where their desire is and where their next uh, where their next intentions are going and how to get alignment and traction with that. And then how to invest in their up level. So what I found over time is that a lot of people, even that set goals, have no idea how to value the goals that they're setting. And then because they don't know how to value it, they have trouble investing in it. And then because they have trouble investing in it, they don't earn a return on investment. And so I tried to make as explicit as possible what this as an iterative process looks like. I love iterative processes because I find if I can teach someone, it's like the whole thing about like teach a man to fish. Right. And that's to me, like the best way is like more autonomy, more freedom, more liberation, more collaboration. And that's really what we do in Club Hero. And that's what Club Hero did in our two day up level your life workshop. OK, so would you each just kind of tell just quick, like 30 second intro, because Dale's new to the advisory team and because the listeners are going to want to know who you guys are and, and why you're why you did the up level your life why you did this workshop with me or why you're doing the crash course uh, after after our live workshop. So it can be a minute, 30 seconds is too short. Lana, will you start? Yes, so my name is Lana Svian and I took the up-level course. Originally I thought to myself, oh, I've done these workshops um, so many times with Kate. I've really, I'm leading the life, I'm living the life that I want. And I was open when I took the up level course and I realized, oh yes, the iterative process from the framework from which Kate actually just allows us to bloom and dig deeper and find out more about how can I make my life better? Uh, it's not always exactly the way it should be. And with the liberating structures and the the assistance of the framework and um, our common people who are in our breakout rooms, you just can not not go deeper. You, the wisdom is within you. The wisdom is within you, and it comes out, and you just it settles with you. The energy is such that. Yes, this is an up level. This is the way that the next direction I need to go. Hmm. Awesome. And for those who don't know, Lana, you came to me when you were retiring from academic teaching uh, with a PhD in exercise physiology. Is that That's right? PhD in physiology, a master's degree in neuroscience and a license in physical therapy. So I really was on the Western, you know, like the left side of the brain. <laughs> So yeah, so I've been with Kate now for, I think this is starting the fifth year. Um, I went through the certification, the health coaching certification, and I've been through all the other programs, Master of You and Ayurvedic Living and Body Thrive and, and have been on this advisory board, I think since the beginning when you first yeah. started to put this together. Yeah, yeah. it's been an awesome. honor. Robin, what, yeah, what brings you to advisory and what brought you to the up level your life crash course? Well, <clears throat> I'm a retired uh, tech executive who spent my career in my brain. 
and not in my body, if you will. And I retired about 15 years ago and spent um, my retirement doing all the fun things I wanted to do. I was an angel investor. Uh, I taught lean startup and project management. I was continuously learning, but during the pandemic, um, I noticed a lot of fear and anxiety creep in and physically I wasn't, I was fit, but not as healthy as I wanted. And my daughter introduced me to Kate a couple years ago, asked me to join her on a detox and to, to vet Kate and the organization because my daughter was thinking of investing in a program and one of the coaching programs. And I have to say, it was life altering for me because like Lana, I've been living the dream. I have to be honest. I was, I have a master's in psychology, but took a pivot, if you will, to get into the tech industry and had a, a great, great career. And as a result, a great life, but um, again, mostly in my head. And the wild habits, body, thrive, master of you, all of that has enriched my life. And Kate and I started talking about forming an advisory board because she had visions of, of moving yoga healers into that next level and, you know, an up level on a very grand scale, if you will. And an advisory board was a logical fit. I didn't take advantage. I didn't participate in the two-day up-level workshop, but I did the process myself. Yeah, the using, crash course, yeah. The yeah. crash course using Kate's videos and the guidebook. And um, like I did some of her, I have some of your other work, Kate, I've done it on my own. And I have to agree with Lana, having a, a community makes it all that much better. But I think up leveling and the process, the iterative process, people should do every decade of their life. And I'm enter, I just entered the eighth decade of my life. And I just am blown away with, as Lana said, even though you think you're living the dream and doing everything you want and have everything you want, you dig deep and you realize even something like who your circle of influence, you know, who are the people around you who influence you and who are their influencers and are they the communities that you still want guiding, guiding your, your next path. So. I love that. I love like the next level invention at uh, in the in the eighth decade and in, in, incredible Robin. Yay. And welcome Dale McIntosh, uh, our new our newest advisory board member. And you were at the two day up level. So I just want to clarify too. I created the up level your life crash course. And then we had our two day and club hero every trimester. We take two days, just like often companies on the quarterly basis do off sites. Uh, we find trimesters work work better for uh well just in general like it just gives us a little bit more time gives us that extra month that four months between well real deep vision and accountability planning sessions <laughs> and uh so what we did in club hero on our on our two day was we went through the up level your life uh, in a in a workshop format and dale you were you were there that was probably your first real like deep dive in with us, uh, will you give everyone a little bit about like who you are, what brings you to advisory, and and what happened in up level your life today? Yeah, um, so I'm Dale McIntosh, and um, for the last 38 years, I've been a software developer. The last 20 years, I was the chief technology officer of a company uh, that was working in the defense industry, and uh, I kind of had a revelation about um, uh, 18 months ago that. You know, my purpose in life was to be a life coach, and I've been following this kind of divine path that's been laid out before me, and which brought me into a cabin in Victor, Idaho with Kate Stillman. And it was really interesting because we had a couple of conversations, and then I looked on um, 
the end table and there were four books there. One of them was uh, Body Thrive, Master of You, Uninflamed. And Kate wasn't there at the time. And I didn't really know who, what Kate's last name was. So I didn't really make the connection. And I picked up Body Thrive and I started reading it. And I said, wow, this is amazing. And I picked up my phone and ordered it on Amazon. And then about an hour later, Kate came down. I started talking. And then I brought up my phone. I looked at WhatsApp and it said Kate Stillman. And I looked at the book and it said Kate Stillman. It's like, oh, my God, you're the one who wrote these books. So Kate and I had some very deep discussions. Um, and uh, then I joined her club. And um, and this was not very long ago. This is a, kind of a relatively new development. And uh, I think what was a retreat maybe four April. weeks ago. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. And um, just really have taken off. I mean, Kate and I are in total alignment as to you know where I'm headed and where she's been and where she's going. And it just clicked. And it was something that was kind of divinely inspired. And um, so I attended the two day workshop and was just blown away. And I've been blown away by everything Kate's done up to this point. And I'm all in and just really looking forward to the beautiful uh, world that we're going to be able to co-create as a part of, um, you know, this initial meeting and just a very, uh, you know, rocket ship that, that we've boarded <laughs> and who knows where it's going. All right, so we're going to dive in now to, and, and I'm going to use the book. I'm going to use the the workbook that comes with the crash course for up level your life. So the big, the big question is what's your opportunity? Uh, really, the language I wanted to use there is like what what's your up level? But I had to start with words that people understand. So what is your opportunity? And that's really what up level your life is all about. For for people listening, it's like stepping out of the whirlwind. And looking at what is your what is your what is your opportunity based on now? And I love how in the Yoga Sutras, by Patanjali, the first word of the text is now. And they say in the Vedic text, the first the first word is what it's all about. So every now has a unique opportunity, and that's what I am inviting people into in the process. Is like what is that? What is the opportunity right now? So sometimes uh, we're in a place where there's just like you know sunshine and roses and rainbows and pots of gold opportunities and sometimes it's like we're in a healing crisis we're maybe looking at some really challenging times and the opportunity can seem like i gotta get out i gotta get out of living hell <laughs> right and, and what i love about mythology is it's it's like all right there right it's like there's there are journeys to hell and back and so we can all expect that in an ordinary life that there'll be times with the sunshine and the roses and the flowers and the pots of gold and then there'll also be times that are incredibly challenging and so those listening like either way right or anywhere in between and so it starts with crisis and i and I, you know, debated about this in my own head as it's like, mm, crisis is a really strong word. And what are our crisis and our up level sits at the crossroads of crisis? And what does that even and what does that even mean? And if we look at the definition of crisis in, in Greek and it's and it's to it's the, for the need to make a decision. And I'm finding like right now there's a lot of change happening and we knew this we've been talking about this for years and in yoga healer and club thrive about living in a world that's that the u.s military turned vuca in the late 90s uh right that it's like we're in this like very volatile chaotic ambiguous like a lot of change is happening i think right now we're all seeing it with ai and we're curious about jobs and we're curious about how humans work with technology and there's just so so much going on so the first crises the way we looked at crises is like what are the decision points in your health in your career business and finance or investment in meaning or purpose so having a crisis of meaning or a crisis of purpose 
family marriage parenting crises, stage of life crises, which could be midlife crises or could be postpartum crises or could be retirement crises, right? There, there's a lot. What is a crisis of leadership? What's a crisis of identity? So I'd love for you guys just to touch on, you know, this whole concept of crisis. And if anyone wants to speak to this, and we'll go through the whole process of up level. And, you know, whichever parts for you are like, ooh, that was interesting or sticky or pivotal, I'd love to hear. Yeah, I'll go ahead and start. Um, you know, from my perspective, you know, not really understanding Kate's terminology as I, I came into this, um, I, I kind of really felt that crisis was, you know, what are you working on in your life? What are the distinctions that you're currently trying to create? What are the areas that are either problematic or areas that you see potential for growth? And, you know, for me, you know, I just changed fields. I retired as a software developer. I was, I'm launching a life coaching career. So that's my crisis. And, and as I up-level myself and become more spiritual, you know, how are the relationships in, with my family uh, changing as I become a, a different person every day and kill parts of my old self in order to make space for my new self? You know, how is that affecting the rest of the world and how are they receiving me? And then how do I continue to, to grow and function even while certain things may be uh, not accepted to the level that I hope they are uh, with respect to my relationships and my family and my other you know, ex-coworkers and things like that. Excellent, yeah. So it's like, what is coming up right now and, and taking a step back and seeing it from multiple levels is, is really what I heard and what, and what, and what Dale shared, not, not just like, oh, I'm gonna reinvent myself, but like, how does this impact all my relationships? This is, this is really key. Yeah, for me, it was it's a combination of since I mentioned the decades a stage of life um, that next facing that next stage where the people you love and care about and yourself start facing really those difficult times, Kate, like you were talking about going from rainbows and roses to potentially hell and wanting. And I combine that with what I call, it's not really a health crisis, but that desire to be the most resilient that I can be um, focusing on my body more than ever um, to ensure that as those challenges face those I love, I can be the most value ever in my life. And I can relate to Dale because, you know, coming from the software and the technology industry and being an executive that managed a lot of people and, and recreated my career probably seven times within the same company. Um, I just never gave myself, I, I focused on problem solving with always with my head. Well, I'm in a decade, and my mother died at this age and died of an illness that looked a lot like the COVID crisis. Mm -hmm. And so the anxiety and fear that had built in my body, I have to manage now in a very different way. So for me, this up level is all about being the healthiest, most resilient human I can be and engaging the people around me in a way that when I'm called on, that will be my service. My value is to help those around me as they progress and transition into the harder times. It's like living the legacy now, right? It's like, yeah, it's like, what does it look like to live legacy in real time? It's, it, to me, that's, it's like bringing back the wise elder, like in real time, IRL, like, in, yeah, so That's so it, and I feel that, Kate. I have to say that in growing into intuition, uh, empathy, everything that comes during the crone phase yeah. Um, is there for me. And it means my heart's more open and hurts more often. Mm -hmm. And I've never had to really deal with that. And now even ancestral healing and gratitude, I realized the other challenges earlier in my life, I wasn't, they didn't impact me in the same way because I wasn't where I am now. Mm -hmm. 
So let's go into desire next, because this is where up level goes, right? Is it after after all these crises, right? After all these looking at like, okay, I have a lot of decision points. I might have some crossroads. There might be some pain in the crossroads too, uh, as as we face decisions. Then we go into desire, and does desire. It's, it's really fascinating, I think, from a Judeo-Christian perspective, because desire is connected to taboo, right? Like things like sex, right? It's like, oh, there's all this taboo around it, or things like uh, psychedelics, right? Where it's like there's or exploratory states of consciousness. That's another way of I'd say saying psychedelics. There's all these things that are are labeled taboo by by culture, right? Even for some of us, I know, like I was raised. I was raised heavily influenced by my Jewish dad and my Catholic mom. And there was a bit of a roadmap, like this is what a successful life looks like, regardless of like desire, right? Regardless of like, who's this unique human being and what's kind of out of, maybe out of the societal boxes. And so with desire, how that connects to unique purpose or Dharma in the Vedic language, right? This idea that you have duties and roles and responsibilities. Uh, some of them you're born into. You're born into the role of the child. So you have the role of the child with your parents through the entire phase of life of burying your parents. You have other dharmas that you really get to choose, especially in this day and age, where if you're a shoemaker son, you don't need to be a shoemaker, right? So there's so much opportunity to tune in to like, what is next? What is our next invention? And focusing on the focusing on the what and not the how. So looking at the blank canvas of our life and also looking at what might be stuck, looking at where we may have limited our desire because we're perpetuating a status quo or we're perpetuating a day-to-day -day reality where we might be in certain relationship agreements or we might be in uh, certain patterns in our habits we might be in certain patterns even in our investing i find this a lot when people come into club hero they start to invest in a way that has a direct impact on their day-to-day -day life so their day-to-day -day life experience starts to vibrate at like a much higher order rather than like a bunch of you know whatever the retirement account sitting in fidelity collecting dust while the years go by so realizing where we get stuck who wants to speak to desire and status quo let me just pop in real quick because um, I wanted to introduce myself. Um, well, my name is Lori. I mean, some of you know me already, but for Dale, I mean, um, I met Kate like around six years ago when I was hitting the crossroad. Um, I Lori like, saved my ass, Dale, by the way. <laughs> um, I feel like that's my uh, phase one up level. I, I I met Kate when I was hitting the crossroad. I was, I, I was... I was a very career oriented person. I was in the corporate industry for 23 years. And I, I keep on saying that I didn't even see my kids crawl. I just saw them running because I wasn't there most of the time. So I met Kate when, um, and she, she gave me the wisdom that what's the next definition of winning? That you can still find your purpose by just not doing what you're currently doing by doing what you want. So I felt I felt like that's my phase one up level. And I the reason why I did the course now, the short course right now, is because I wanted to find out what's the next. Because I'm I, I'm there, there's a combination of crisis for me, because I'm like I'm I'm in midlife already. And I felt like I'm playing a very small role now with my kids. And the main purpose why I left that career was because of them. So I'm, I'm, there's a struggle finding the purpose. There's a crisis of meaning, purpose. The reason is because initially they're the reason why I made those decisions. And now I'm playing a very small role because they're growing up and the world is changing. I felt like they don't need me anymore. So well, and this is important. I mean, your, your son just started high school in UK on full scholarship yes. at a really cool yeah. high school your daughters in college, right? So there's this <laughs> level of like, I rocked that <laughs> and now what's next? So it's like, it's a good problem. Uh, it's, a, it's a good crisis. It's more of like finding, because I, I felt like I'm being left alone now because it's like my my son knows 
everything now. He, he can run, he can do things independently. Same goes with my daughters. It's like I'm I'm that's my that's basically my crisis. So that's the reason why I took the initiative. I was the first one who did up level. Oh, that's when you, right. You you asked it, right? Yeah, when you were first writing it, it's not even completed. There's a lot of typos yet. And I was the one who first did it. So yeah, and um I feel like um so my desire is basically to to still to to find what's the next definition of winning. What's my purpose? Um, my desire is to be able to accept that the world is that the world is changing, that this is happening, and it's normal that the kids are growing. So that's my desire, and still be able to find my value. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else want to speak on on desire and status quo? Anything that came up? Yes. Um, it, this whole process is so important because you can be proactive and prevent that crisis of identity. Mm -hmm. You can, or when something happens to you and a crisis is gonna happen all the time. I mean, I'm in my eighth decade as well. You're gonna hurt your knee skiing. You're going to, this investment's gonna fall through the roof. Your, your husband may say, oh, sorry, I'm, you know, this isn't working out anymore. That kind of crisis can stop you in your tracks. And then you've got the, oh, my kids are gonna be leaving home. What am I gonna do with my life? Or in my case, I've had this amazing career. What am I going to do with my life now that I'm retired? So I guess because we're older people on this podcast, I want to bring it to the importance of this process in every phase of life. Um, when there's a crisis that you can't control or when you can look down into the future and say, I'm going to have to prepare for that. So that's what I, I want to get across for every, all the viewers or and listeners. I agree, Lana. And I also think the advantage of really focusing on your status quo is it does reaffirm the real positives you built to that point because yeah. you really have to, um, you are, taking such a close look, you are diving deep. And I loved drawing my status quo and recognizing just because it's status quo doesn't mean it has to change, but you have to recognize the value of it. And Kate, that's what you're asking us to value the up level for all the good reasons, mm -hmm. but it also helped me value those elements of the status quo that I absolutely worked hard to get to and don't want to change. Yeah, 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 totally. Like what's working, what's not working, right? And it's like what the process, I just wanna to speak too of like doing this because this is a, everything that I create and teach comes from what I experience with my in my work or in my core family relationships or even in my extended family relationships, team relationships, right? So it's like all tested before. And that's really what I noticed is that when we continue to, and I just wanna tune in like what you guys just said, is like there's a lot of different points along the way. And if we're really tuned in on these points along the way, it changes the opportunities in the future. And it prevents, and it really does prevent like bigger crises, the ones that, especially the ones we do not want to experience, whether it's health crisis or stage of life crisis or relationship crisis or financial crisis. Uh, so that tuning into desire is one of the things that I'm hyper aware of in myself, in my child and my husband, because those are my, those are the people I live with, right? So they're going to impact me more than anything. So if, if we don't know what each other wants next and how that's changing, right, then there's less connection then there's less creativity, then there's less innovation, then there's less collaboration, which means we're diminishing the opportunity. We're really diminishing the opportunity. And so for me, noticing like, for example, with my husband who owns Teton Glass, it's a local glass shop, they work in Jackson Hole, Wyoming and, and uh, in Teton Valley, Idaho. 
And just noticing like he had a desire to play a way bigger game, but not in that business. So we started another company that really allowed him to expand in so many ways, creatively, in responsibility, in complexity, right? And it's like, if I hadn't been tuned in, if we hadn't been doing this work on desire, he would have just kind of created more what I call crutches or like these subsidiary structures around limitation, right? And some people do that by just eating an extra 200 calories a day in the form of a beer after work. And some people do it, you know, through other ways, through these things that are called outlets. But what if we like actually don't do the outlets, but we allow the charge to build? Then, then what happens? Okay, so the next part is the value of the up level. So once we know what the app level is, once we know what the status quo is in the desire, the desire points to exactly what the opportunity or the up level is in, in specific terms. This is what it might look like in terms of, you know, I mean, a lot of people in Club Hero, it's like it's a promotion at work or it's starting another company or uh, it's, you know, for some people, they're an executive director of one organization and they want to combine that with another organization. Like there's this whole idea of like getting really specific of what that is for other people. It's in health. Right. It's like it might just be like making it through a serious disease for other people. Like for me right now, taking Indy, we leave for Rishikesh on Saturday. Right. It's like it's very clearly part of my parenting responsibilities to her to have a much more integrated education and to start to understand what it's like to invest in a skill set as opposed to investing in education at large. Right. So we get really clear on like this is the up level. Then how do we value it how do we actually put a dollar and i know this is so hard for people how do we actually assess the value of of the up level so that we can invest in it and so that we can project a return on investment who wants to speak to the value of the up level well i can speak to just from a health standpoint <clears throat> When you start talking about, I'm I'm at a point where right now I don't spend any money really on supplements or even medical or, or dental other than deductions because I'm healthy-ish, right? But you start thinking about what does the average person mid 70s spend in terms of supplements? Fit I do pay for fitness. Um, but if you start thinking about what do people on average pay when those big medical situations happen and you realize, especially as you get into your 80s, that number goes way up. And if there's just from a health standpoint, if you can be the healthiest, most resilient, you can start putting average numbers on it beyond what you pay for insurance. Um, the allopathic method, right, of treatment. But I started thinking about, Kate, even um, you recommended St Tim Spector, and I'm reading Food for Life, and I started looking at his company, Personalized Nutrition, the Zoe company, mm -hmm. and you start realizing that's a trivial expense, Again, coming back to valuing your most important asset being you, um, the resistance to spend money. When you read his books, now he's saying, as a medical professional, I changed my mind. You don't need supplements because food is medicine. If you get the right food, now you have no expenses for supplements. So spending money for personalized nutrition all of a sudden is huge return on investment yeah yeah so you think about it different yeah dale yeah so this was an interesting thing for me because i'm at the point in my life where you know i just sold my company and now i'm looking to give back so it's like you know it's really about you know how do i contribute to society and so how do I put a monetary value on that? Well, you know, when, when you really think about it, if you're really contributing to society, it's kind of hard not to make money. You know, it's almost like that's a measure of your impact because the universe tends to reward you for what you do. And that kind of comes back 
you know, in some monetary form or something that you can value. So, so it, it took a little bit of a reframe for me to really kind of come up with monetary values, but those monetary values were more associated with what would society or what would the universe or whatever, you know, provide for me to show its gratitude for, for my giving back versus how much money I was going to make. You know, what's interesting about that, Dale, when I retired, <clears throat> I became an angel investor and a, a huge mentor. And what I realized is I started budgeting how much money I was willing to invest every single month for the sheer joy of learning about new industries or diving deeper in industries I was very interested in, in mentoring entrepreneurs and investing in their companies through my and angel partnerships, but also patronage. I became a patron because I realized that enriched my soul, you know, and and I realized that was a form of giving back for a great life. And I literally budgeted it, that in every single month. And I explained it to my husband that, you know, we could, we could, we could use this money in other ways. But for now, for this period of time, and I gave him a window of so many years that I was going to invest in other people's companies, knowing I might get zero return other than karmic or however you want to look at that. Um, sure. Personal growth and enjoyment after years and years of working so hard to provide, you know, a great life for a lot of people. That was just my passion project, joy project, you know, and some of those investments paid off in ways I could have never expected. But I had to reframe it just the way you said and budget it. And Kate, I get why in an up level, it is hard for people. You really have to get them to think differently. And you talk briefly about, you know, your your investments being tucked away in fidelity, you know, yeah. earning X amount but it's a larger view of what your assets in life really are. And they're far beyond what's in your 401k and your brokerage firm. Um, the relationships of investing in other people and their companies to me became invaluable mm -hmm. to this day. Yeah. And for me, it's also like, you know, donating to my alma mater and <laughs> helping to mentor students in the field that I just retired from. And, you know, there's a lot of investments that you make personally to enrich the lives of others, or even to, you know, put them in a position to enrich their own lives. Whereas without you, they could be like, you know, leaves in the wind or whatever, and, and really needing somebody to provide a rudder so that they can, you know, point their life in the right direction. I'll give you a quick little example. There was somebody that we met at the retreat a 17 year old girl who grew up in um in a in a household where she wasn't really allowed to thrive and could really sense that that she could really use a, a rudder and i've established a relationship with her and i'm you know mentoring her and we'll probably hire her as an intern and maybe as an employee but just because it was something that i saw that there was a need and 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 now i'm in that part of my life where i'm giving back and it well, just Dale makes sense. You and I come from the same industries and having those pathways for young people to, to make that connection is so invaluable. And Kate, what I love about up level is that you ask people to look at all of that. Mm -hmm. So it's every element of your life. And I agree, Dale, because I've been involved with um, student mentoring and career pathways and and actually taught at our local university after I, I retired and still serve on those boards nationally and at the state level um, around education and providing pathways for our youth for that same reason. But I think the up level that diving deep enough that you recognize the value of each of those things that you've chosen to do or want to do is is so key and i i it's exciting to hear you 
um, explore that, Dale, at this point, because I know from my own career experience, and Lonnie, you're probably the same way, you invest so much of your energy in that one thing, and it impacts a lot of people. But to have the time and energy to go through this up-level process and, and go deep and micro-focus, but also get that maximum view of your life, almost like that 360. That's why I said scrutinizing even the people that influence you mm. is so important to do periodically and that this is an iterative process we all should rightfully do if we want to be the best that we can be and have the largest impact, positive impact. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Thank you. So the part two with the value of the up level that I saw from working with wellness pros for so long, right? Because at Yoga Healer, after working with more business to consumer for a decade, then I, because I was successful, my friends, they were all wellness pros were like, how do you do it? So I started coaching wellness pros in business around 2010. And uh, one of the things I noticed about us as a community, because we were intergenerational, some from like ages about, I don't know, 18 to 80 was about our, our spectrum, is that wellness pros had invested so much in their wellness wisdom. Just like you guys in tech invest so much in your technical wisdom, your engineering, your systems, your processes, your quality, control your user experience, like totally different skill set, right? And it has a return on investment. It's valuable in, uh, in business structures, it's valuable to society, it's valuable to humanity. Right. And in, this, in, in, in a really different vertical, we had these wellness pros that were completely different than their peers. Right. So it didn't matter if they were 18, 28, 38, 48, 58, 68, 78. I think our oldest member is 82. Right. It didn't it didn't matter, although it did accumulate. Right. So. That wisdom, the earlier someone had started investing in their wellness wisdom, the more lifetime return on investment they would get. Just like, you know, if you do invest in fidelity when you're 18, it builds up. You have, you have the compound effect. What I found is that those that had invested earlier in their wellness wisdom, by the time they were 10, 20 years down that path, they had an entirely different physiology, mindset, skill set relational set they had a totally different healing team like the shit hits the fan team is what i call it but they also had the internal wisdom so say they needed say they were in an accident and needed a surgery say something happened that was out of their control and they needed those healing skills that's where the roi showed up exponentially right, right. and to me that's across any and you know people working on relation like a lot of people in club hero are taking their they use up level their life and and they take their relate their core relationships or their work relationships to the next level right they invest in that then they get an roi because it's an iterative process because we use liberating structures and other things that again are just a skill set right and then it's like oh wow but that one has a huge roi because now two years down the line what is my opportunity now my opportunity is in a different playing field and i also want to explain why i use the word up level because it's not a word, <laughs> and I've been using it for a decade. Uh, it is a word, this upaya is a word in Sanskrit, so it exists in other languages, and it's describing that there's higher orders of organization, there's higher orders of harmony, there's higher orders of magnitude, there's higher orders of impact. If I look at someone like Elon Musk, it's like, how does he do it? <laughs> clearly he's operating at a higher order, right? He's operating at a higher order of magnitude, higher order of, of impact. So what does that look like for, for us, whether we want a higher order in our parenting, whether we want a higher order, like right now I'm really working intensely with my parents, uh, in, with their health and spiritual and relational evolution took that to a higher order, right? Took that to a leather level, which means I get integrated, my consciousness gets integrated at a higher level. And it uses, I think so much to Robin's point, it uses everything I've got. It uses all my past status quos, all my past achievements, all my past up levels are necessary for the next level of, of integration. 
we have to be able to consider what the next identity is, what the identity is at the up level. I love mythology. I love hero myths and heroine myths. And it, part of the reason I love those is because the identities always shifted after the journey. Right, there's clear signs of who the person was before and clear signs of who the person has become after. And we try to make those tangible and then assess the value and then assess the value of, the, of that investment. It's like, who is Odysseus before the Odyssey? Who is Odysseus after the Odyssey? Same guy, yes. Different guy, yes too, right? So what are the new capabilities, capacities, identity, community? How would your skills evolve? How would that up level then create the next opportunities? I just talked to Lynn Beck in Club Hero about this because she's in it like, she's only been in Club Hero for five months, but she did Body Thrive with a coach for a couple of years before. And her opportunities are totally different than six months ago. Totally different than three years ago before she lost 40 pounds in Body Thrive. Totally different in terms of her life vision, her parenting, her investing, her career, just completely different opportunities because of the up level. And then for some people, how would you gain financially? For her, she got a raise, so that was pretty uh, obvious. And then she now understands the trajectory of future raises. So what becomes possible in your legacy that you would pass forward? If we look at the, the accumulation of the next level identity, who wants to speak to that? Of like being in an iterative process where you're invited into next level capacities and capabilities. You know, if someone's in a crisis, and they're snarled in that crisis and that thinking, constant uh, circular thinking, they're not seeing the opportunities and um, just stepping out of that circular thinking and looking at the opportunities shifts your, um, you, you, have a, you go from cortisol to maybe Oxy, some of the happy hormones, you know? Yeah, oxytocin, yeah. Yeah, oxytocin. And you, you then can see a way out of the crisis. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's just a shift. And uh, I, I wish more and more people would take this uh, opportunity to do this process and it doesn't have to be, I know in many of the groups, people's um, desires were, they would apologize because they were so tiny. And it was no, it is the step forward to get into that new you. Hmm. Uh, so I guess that that's what I would hope that people would understand that th this isn't a process that you can go over and over and over and get better and better and better and see clearly where you need to go. Well, and also it's a great revisiting of your tool set. Again, Kate, as you mentioned, this is a great reminder of all the skills you have, of all the tools you have, all the resources available to you because oftentimes, again, when I retired, I went through a period of about two years where I actually sought out a depth psychologist because I wanted to revisit what is my true calling, my meaning, my purpose after having had a career and realizing that the first half of your life is developing your ego you know, becoming who you are, but you're greatly influenced by your family, by your colleagues, by your career, by society. And that second half of life is to really evaluate how far did I deviate from my true purpose and mm -hmm. meaning my dharma because of what other people said I should be doing because of what society said. And that was such a liberating process. And this is the same again. This is a way of reflecting back and then looking forward. And to your point, Lana, that especially when those crises hit, you knew, now have reminded yourself of all those tools you have, all those skills you have to deal with, not just for you, but for those you care about around you. And that's what I greatly appreciate. Mm -hmm. 
you know, for me, it's kind of interesting because I'm going to, I'm going to take uh, what Robin just said and, and take it in a slightly different direction because I think what it is the first half of your life, you're building your ego. The second half of your life, you're ripping it apart. Yes. You're, you're literally destroying your ego. And at the very end of your life, you probably don't even have an ego because you can't take it with you anyway. So yeah. it's, 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 it's kind of this process for me, it's been really interesting. And even though I wasn't really integrated into this because I hadn't met Kate yet. I mean, I woke up, you know, 18 months ago with a with the belief that my purpose in life was to be a life coach. And I never thought that in my life. And and then I started following that process because I was looking to the signs that were coming from the universe. And there was a progression. I mean, I thought I was going to do this. I started meditating and then I found out about manifestation. And then I found out I'd been manifesting my whole life. And then and, and so, you know, there's these micro iterations. And, and as you go through these iterations, you couldn't have made the quantum leap from the first iteration to the last iteration because you didn't have the information or the knowledge that you needed in order to make the next step. So, so, yeah. so it, it's iterative in nature, up leveling, and, and you up level, you know, today and then next week you, you're at another point and you up level again and you just do that iteratively throughout your life because you're constantly growing and you're constantly evolving. And, uh I, I just wanted to add as well that, I mean, 100%. I, I'm just so lucky because I know within the group, I'm probably the, the the youngest, though I'm already in midlife as well. It's just so lucky that imagine if, imagine if I was able to do this when I was in my mid-20s. Hmm. If I was just on, on, on my mid-20s. Imagine if I'll be hanging out with people like you who whose wisdom have gone a long way already. Mm-hmm. And the bottom line for me of my up level is that, you know, I'm continuously leveling up my skill set. Mm-hmm. Most importantly, my mindset, because I'm on that, you know, I'm on the next phase where in I'm trying to find again what's my value and keeping in mind what are the current skill set that I already have that I'm probably missing out because just what Robin says, because I'm deviating of what my true purpose is because I was defined by the culture of the people around me that in order for you to become a good parent, a good mother, is to continuously taking care of your children and not giving them the freedom to, to be on their own because I'm on that that, that's the culture that I grew the up The helicopter with. parenting culture, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. and it's continuously evolving what my skill set, but at the same time, using the skill set that I have already because the opportunities are just there. I might be missing out the opportunities because I was focusing on the things that's probably is no longer the priority at this point. Yeah. I mean, it's so fascinating, too, because, Lori, we've worked together, like you said, for six years, and I, my up level from yoga healer and yoga health coaching was like, okay, we clearly, we clearly need a brand that's bigger than that, which makes no sense for those of you who are in small business and understand the power of niching. It's like, it's not the smart move to go more general, and we go more general into Club Thrive, Club Hero, Wellness Pro Academy. And, and now it's clear to me that like, I'm not meant, like this is so big. I produce so much content. I produce so many books. It's overwhelming to a small team. So now I'm looking at, okay, I have a pitch deck. Like I'm looking for investors and in terms of capital and expertise, next level of organization. And so Lori's been right there with me, shape-shifting with me through these up levels and as have my husband and I. And, and this is what growth relationships look like right there's those that like get traction and and build off each other and to me that's where it's so 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 exciting and it's really differentiating between the people that are like always coming up with an excuse or i'd call them the whiners the people you know the the glass half full uh, or sort of glass half empty like that whole type of Mm -hmm. of perspective which really brings us into the the sacrifice so that's where it goes next, right? Is like once we get the up level, we get the value of the up level. The next two questions are like, what's the sacrifice? So the word sacrificium from Latin, which I don't speak Latin, so I probably mispronounced, 
Sacrifice means to make holy or sacred, right? So we make something sacred by eliminating all the distractions, all the, all the trade-offs. What I'm saying here is because it's an up-level, the trade-offs are trade-ups. We talked at length during the two-day up-level Your Life workshop. We talked at length about like what it looks like to cancel Netflix and subscribe to YouTube. Like it's subscribe to a learner channel rather than a, you know, a download channel. What does it look like to just completely turn off victim mindset and look instead at continually like what we're, what we're investing in? What are we making sacred? And then part of that, like, uh, like Robin and, and Lana mentioned is like your compadres, like who are you hanging out with at the up level? And one of the ways that I see this and compadre means with God as father. So who's already at a higher level? Who's already, you know, in that more divine interplay so that you get a lift up to your up level, right? So you're surrounded by the vibration, the expertise, the skill set, the mindset, the tool set with people who've already acted out what you're moving into next. So for me, having, you know, having Rob in here who's done angel investing is so helpful as I'm looking at entering that phase in my business, having Dale here who's exited a company who understands financing and boards, right? It's like all you guys are clearly a part of that next left up level for me, which is why we have an advisory board that has skills that has networks that are way beyond uh, what I've done. I mean, you know, I'm like a glorified yoga teacher, Ayurvedic practitioner, business Hardly. person, author. <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> <laughs> so this who you're influenced by, this is really where we end the process is looking at what's the status quo influence so that we can get really clear maybe where uh, there's this, there's a, I would say a transition into next level relationship agreements. Uh, and then we really also get to choose who and where we hang out with next. And to some degree, this, these can be influencers. They don't have to be IRL people, uh, but some of them are gonna be in real life people. And, and I think the closer we get to, to making those influencers more real in our life is where it really, I think, gets, gets exciting. And that helps us make some of the, the decisions that we need to make in order to make the up level real. So does anyone want to just speak to the sacrifice, anything with sacrifice, compadres, and, and the up level decisions as we as we bring our wrap to a close? Yeah, I'll, I'll speak to sacrifice for just a second, because I think I mentioned something earlier. You know, you need to kill parts of yourself to make space for growth. And that to me is ultimately what the sacrifice is. You're sacrificing part of your ego, part of yourself in order to um, to make room for that growth. And there's, you know, compadres and people that may be associated with that parts of your ego that may actually get kind of those relationships may get sacrificed along with it. And, and it's not necessarily something that requires a lot of effort because as your vibration changes, you tend to become incompatible and then it just kind of fades away. And that's just, that's just how life is and, and what happens. So I thought that would be a distinction that, that might resonate with people. Well, and what I found really fascinating is when you really sit down and look at your compadres, I had never really looked at it. And I mean, I, I could easily tell you who they were and why, why they influenced me. But to look at their circle of influencers was an eye opener. Because then you start realizing if, if you know them well enough and then identify those influencers, you realize which are less desirable for you and which are more. And I agree with Dale that there's a, a graceful way to move through life um, through circles of friends and influencers that's that's gentle and an and easy, kind way to distance yourself when the time is right. Not everybody does that. And we know people that are brutal and toxic and everything else. But I do agree, Dale, that it, it should be easy if you're clear on your desire and if you've really looked closely at the value that you're come and I don't mean this in a cold way, but the value your compadres bring you, and you bring them because let's be honest, you influence probably 
equally, you know, you're in the, of that circle, you're an influence as well. And that value you have to consider. We also talked about at, at the uh, two day uh, workshop that the influencers do not have to be the, in, in your circle of friends, in your community, right? They are people, you know, that you read their books or um, watch their YouTube channels or uh, get their newsletters and, and that kind of thing. And another thing that Kate said that was really, I, it, to create your five most, you know, influencing people in your life doesn't mean you're getting rid of um, good high school friends, you know, that you've been, uh, you do things with just because they aren't on this growth path. They bring something else in your life. But being aware of that, Lana, I think yes. that's the key. And that's yes. the value of up, up level is the scrutiny mm -hmm. You're giving, again, 360 to you and your life. Yes. I, I think it's hugely valuable. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Thanks, you guys, for walking everyone through the process and introducing the podcast listeners to the advisory. And I'm, uh, I'm really excited about where we're all going next. And for those who want up-level, your life will... Uh, We'll let you know how to get it. You go to clubthrive.global forward slash up level, and we'll put a promo code in the show notes here, and uh, and you can get a screaming deal on up level your life. In the process, you get to have two conversations, and the first conversation is what is your up level, and the second conversation is the value of your up level. So we'll help you out with that. The reason we include those conversations in the up level experience is we know that you probably will get a lot farther doing this both alone and together with us, then you will just alone. So we want to help you be able to experience your up level because if we're all in our up levels, then wow, here we go. Massive collaboration and the world just keeps getting better. Mm -hmm.